Greetings, welcome to Python. Here we're using the uh, Spider IDE, which is uh, featured as part of the Anaconda distribution of Python. The approach here is to use some actual cell biology concepts to reinforce some object-oriented concepts, namely inheritance versus composition. I'm going to use composition to create a eukaryote cell in its dunder in it, its birth process method, which as you know is triggered by calling eukaryote with the arguments that would go to in it. We're going to show that in a second. Uh, let's just look first though at where composition occurs. That's where we bring objects on board during the birth process usually. We're going to need a nucleus. We have a separate class already defined that we just create an instance of by passing it some DNA. You'll see ahead we have some organelles. Um, eukaryotes are complicated, unlike prokaryotes. Above the eukaryote class, you see the prokaryote. It inherits from cell. We're going to talk about inheritance in a bit, but has no body right now. We don't implement the prokaryote. Let's start with the cell being immature because we're going to have a separate S phase, which I'm now looking at. S phase is a method that we call on eukaryote cell. We assume that it only has the one strand of DNA, and so G needs to pair with C, A with T, T with A, C with G, and so forth. We have two strings. Uh, each one is the strand of DNA, so you could say um, we have the double helix is stored as a tuple of two strings. Uh, I updated the code slightly. Um, what you see here, let's see, when we look at the nucleus, we'll see if uh, this is the most recent version. It's going up to the nucleus there. Yeah, this is the most recent when I create, um, well, let's let's get back down to init and take this step by step. When we do a nucleus, we pass it some DNA, which is then going to need to be replicated at mitosis. We also pass Golgi, Golgi body and a mitochondrion. Neither of these have been implemented. They're both brought on board through composition without any real definition. So that's the complete birth process except I haven't talked about the super first line much yet, which I'm going to do. Uh, I think it's time to start actually using some code here. So what I'm going to do is from cell world import star, which is going to be all of our classes. And then I'm going to create a eukaryote right off the bat. We're going to call it uh, cell one. And that's the name. We're going to bind it to an instance of eukaryote. We only pass in a generation, which initialized to zero. It's going to turn to one immediately and some DNA. So that's just one strand of DNA. It's as if we have just split and we just have the first beginnings of a eukaryote. So it's not mature yet. That's what we just looked at. So I was going to do some S phase, which is where we... Uh, divide, begin to divide, but before we do that, uh, let's just take a look at the nucleus. Uh, it shows that we have a string and an empty tuple. That will be two, an empty string and uh, a full string tuple in the version currently shown. Moving on, we uh, look into the nucleus and see that after S phase, the complementation has occurred. The base pairs have all found their matches. And now we're ready to divide, finally. Were we to try dividing prior to S phase, we would raise an exception. I'm just showing the uh, value error right here. That's what you would get if you were to divide prior to S phase having occurred. Okay, what do we do when we divide? Well, now it's time to go up to the nucleus, and it's a very simple mitosis method. All it does is it breaks that tuple into two and gives one strand of it to the new cell. So when we look at the new cell's DNA, we see inside that it has one strand. Oops, that's uh, <laughs> okay. 
there's the one strand of DNA. Let's clear the screen and continue uh, to look at this new cell that we have. It has a generation two. Now what's occurred to the original cell is it has also gotten older. So actually these two cells, once they go through S phase, they're pretty much indistinguishable. They have the same DNA double helix and they're equally old. Eventually, uh, with cells, they don't live forever, so we would have some kind of uh, auto, uh, auto self-destruct mechanism built in after the generation number got to a certain level. That might be the next, next thing to implement. So what else can we look at here? Let's talk a little bit about inheritance now that we've looked at composition. Notice that eukaryote is inheriting from a cell. Now, cell is not that much. We've got the composition going on, and then we have a common ancestor for both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And all it does is get old, get older. That's all that I'm having the cell method do. But see in super uh, in it, the first line of in it, in the eukaryote, we call up to the ancestor class. This is called extending a base class method. We're calling into cell and saying whatever cell is born, we want to do that. We want to do the aging thing and then we'll do things that are specific to the eukaryote, such as compose with the nucleus and these other organelles that are characteristic. So super is an instance of using inheritance to expand the capabilities of a class. These are the two major ways that we, you know, um, develop by extending classes and by bringing other objects on board from classes. So prokarya and, and eukarya both inherit from cell, but then they compose, or at least eukaryote composes its nucleus and so forth. So that's the difference and between inheritance and composition. I hope that helps you understand basic object-oriented programming using Python. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.